Well, I didn't know if I was going to be painting today, but I am. So, here we go. I'm, uh, I'm finding this to be a little on the blue side so far. I think I should reserve those colors for other areas. But I still need some variety in the area that I'm playing. So I've got some, what am I doing here? Raw umber, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre. I've even tinted some spots with a little bit of, uh, added a little bit of cad yellow pale to it. And we're just going to muck around with these colors. And that's what this painting is going to be, mucking around. Kind of a fun thing. Let's see here. Uh, I don't think I should be shy of raw umber. I'll use raw umber. A little bit of alizarin crimson. It's it's a pink I'm not crazy about. However, when used in conjunction with other colors. Um, in somewhat limited amounts. I think it does a good job. I think it adds to the painting. I'm not worried about allowing the warp and weft of the canvas to show through on this one. I'm just gonna go for I'm going to go for what I'm going to go for. And how it turns out, well, we'll see. I'm not even sure. I'm not even convinced that I want that tree to be so tall. Okay, we're getting down closer to the... Down into here, I don't want it to be too light. If I, if I have this too high value here, we're going to draw a lot of attention right to this center of the painting. No, we don't want that. Not center top to bottom, center right to left. We want to avoid that. No, I said I'm not worrying about letting the warp and weft of the canvas show through. But if that's how it works out, I'm not. I'm not. I'm also not going to worry about it. It is what it is. I'm having this rising vapor because in the mountains, you know, you have that a lot around here. <coughs> you know, you know, unless the clouds are very high, and actually, don't forget, you know, if the clouds are very high and it's a clear type of day, you don't get these these. Um, horizontal bottoms of the clouds. We're, we're adjacent to the mountain top and or to the side of a mountain and that's where the clouds come from. Evaporation from the mountains and they rise, they, they creep up out of the mountains and form clouds as they, as they go up. So that's sort of the feeling I'm after. Sure, I'm painting the sky right now, but I think I'm going to include this part. I think I'm going to paint right across here. These two planes of existence and we'll probably save this closest one for, for later.
Oops. I'm being a little bit on the generous side with my cobalt blue, I think. Mind you, I don't mind that too much because I drop the value a little bit and that takes away from low value, high value here. If we drop, keep the value in the sky a little bit lower, we don't have a very strong line here. I just want indications of this line. I don't, I'm not going to have hard lines along there. I'm not a hard liner. Don't appreciate it. Okay. That was just another bad joke. Anyway, let's just keep going with that. Sort of sticking with a what? A diluted purple? A, a diluted purple? Or a diluted purple? That's all right. I think I'll warm it up though. A little bit of yellow ochre. A little more. A little more lizard crimson. Because I'm so used to putting more definition in my sky and more design in my sky, I'm, I'm really having to be conscious of not, not making that sky too strong. A little more raw umber, a little more yellow ochre, a hint of the lizard and crimson, a dash of pepper some thyme and a little oregano and I think we might have the right combination there. Let's have a little rocky knoll sitting there. How about that? Here we're going to drop the value again a little bit, again with the lizard crimson, and raw umber, hint of cobalt blue, a little farther away you know I think what I'll do is I think what I will do is make that tree a little smaller give it the appearance a little more of the appearance of distance hard lines here where my trees and foreground cliff has met the sky and I don't want ridges there because the sky paint will be a bit dried out by tomorrow and I don't want to commit to painting the entire thing right now so I'm scraping those ridges off and 
That way it won't be a problem blending or feathering in the new paint into the old paint, even though they're only a day apart. Now, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one thing here. One thing. I'd like to make the sky just a tad stronger right here. I would like the strongest light, I think, to be Long after this video is done, and I've seated myself back in my chair at the computer, and I'm playing with other things, I will see something in this sky that I want to change. I'm saying that because it almost always happens. There will be something that's not quite the way I want it. So, on the next video, you'll probably notice that, you know, I don't know, maybe you will, maybe you won't, maybe at least such a minor thing that it won't matter, but... Often there will be a, a slight change in my paintings from one video to the next. Sort of coming off of that tree. It's okay. That's okay. Okay. Now, I think our sky is okay. Certainly for now. I haven't gooped it on. You know, it's not a mud pie. So any small changes will be easily, easily accomplished. What we do have is a plethora of colors, or a plethora. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Um, but very subtle, very subtle changes in the sky. Because in the entire painting, I don't think there's going to be anything very hard. That's not the plan. The plan is to keep it. Somewhat gentle. switch to this knife because of the bow in it and I don't really like the way that my light is sitting and it's much easier to accomplish with this knife so if you have the tool sitting right there why not use it
Done. <coughs> yes, very close to center. Very close to center. However, this is going to be so much softer and this will be more united with the sky than this will be. And most likely, this will be more united with the sky than this will be united with this. That helps to, that helps to redirect the eye a little bit and help people to ignore the glaring fact or make it rather not such a glaring fact that our light, our source of light, no not our source of light but our, our pinpoint of light is, is, uh, is very close to center. It actually pulls this this way psychologically because this all gets soft. Here we have our darkest value, our lowest value in the sky very close to our highest value in the sky and the rest just kind of feathers away. That's the theory. That's the idea. Is it going to happen? I don't know. There's one way to find out. So let's do that. Raw umber, cobalt blue. Little of those are in crimson. Yeah, similar colors to the sky. Absolutely. Slightly lower value. Keep adding too much of this and then too much of that. All right. I'm too strong here. I don't like those lines showing. I really don't like those lines. 
pretty out of character for me, but that's how it is. Okay, something like that. Something like that. Uh, okay, we're coming down here. We'll go back to our raw umber again. We're going a little bit grayer. Raw umber cobalt blue. Crimson again. Oop, the value is way too high, isn't it? Yeah, kind of is. Nope, too much. Too close to the sky color there. One way to differentiate it is the mountain from the sky is, is indeed values, but colors as well. And if your colors match perfectly, well, you don't want that. If it was a huge painting and you had same colors here, but, but way over somewhere to the right or to the left, <coughs> you can get away with it. But you don't want the same colors too adjacent to each other. Just the right amount. And that's just stuff you gotta play by ear. Okay. Um. All right. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. Looks like we're doing all right. some talus and some scree here in the foreground. to go lighter down here. I don't think I should. What I should do is take a break. And maybe come back with fresh eyes. Okay, a couple things here. Uh, 
I just want to strengthen the idea of moisture coming up here. Mist. Mist. No defined tendrils of fog, but the general impression of it. I think that says what we needed to say. Let's obliterate that completely there. And I think before I worry about the whole fresh eyes thing, I'd like to add a bit of cobalt or a bit of uh, yellow ochre. Maybe not too much, but a little bit. Now it's time that I should whisper to myself and hold my breath and things like that. I'll either pass out or I'll remain steady enough to actually paint this. All right, we'll stop there. Next time round, we'll go down to here and play. Oh, I guess I'll square the camera off, because that's, I think, always a good idea to help you see what's going on. see now there's a fair bit of color in there not not super clearly defined no super strong designs except for the edge of that distant mountain cliff and then of course much stronger when we come closer and then a hint of some mists coming up from the valley below maybe there's a not the valley below but between the, the crevasse there must be some snow melt running down. Cold moisture evaporating into the warm air. Or is it warm moisture evaporating into the cold air rising up from the stream? I don't know. Okay, that's it for the moment. Have a good one, guys.